Kitsap County Public Works owns and operates the Central Kitsap Treatment Plant located just south of Keyport in Central Kitsap County. The treatment plant operates under a discharge permit issued by the Washington Department of Ecology and is rated for an average daily flow of 6 million gallons. Sewage is collected with 106 miles of gravity sewer mains and 31 miles of force mains. The collection process uses 44 pumping stations to move sewage to the treatment plant. The treatment plant service area extends south on Wheaton Way to Riddell Square, north to Lamalo and Polsbo, including Keyport and the Keyport Naval Facility, east to Illahi, west to serve Bangor and Clahalla, and along Dyes Inlet, including Chico, El Dorado Hills, and Silverdale. Wastewater receives secondary treatment using activated sludge and is disinfected before being discharged 3,190 feet from shore, 41 feet under the water surface of Port Orchard Bay. Let's take a look at the treatment process. The treatment plant laboratory is the heart of the treatment process. It is accredited by the state of Washington to ensure accuracy. Lab analysts closely monitor water samples from multiple sampling points throughout the treatment process. Data generated by their analysis is used to refine plant operations and ensure compliance with environmental rules and regulations. Plant operators also perform a battery of process control tests each day to accommodate changes in flow rates, temperature, sewage strength, and other relevant factors that impact the treatment process. Historical records are kept electronically and are reviewed to plan for seasonal changes and optimize plant performance. Operators continually monitor plant conditions using a supervisory control and data acquisition system. A number of pumps and valves can be operated from the system either by direct control by the operator or by pre-timed sequences. The system provides a comprehensive history of pump run times, flows, temperatures, levels, and other data used in analyzing plant operations. These circular charts record influent flow data for one week. There is a separate chart for operations on the east and the west side of the plant. Real-time flow is recorded and total readings by day, week, and month are computed electronically. Flow volumes vary because of decreased use of the sewer system at night and during early morning hours when people are generally sleeping. They increase during busy times when people shower, wash laundry, and prepare meals. Alarms at each of the county's pump station are monitored with telemetry. Each station is equipped with electronics that recognize power losses, intruders, and impending overflow conditions. Telemetry at each station alerts plant personnel to any deviation from normal operating conditions. The system is equipped with an auto-dialing method that notifies duty staff after hours and on weekends. Strict procedures in place to acknowledge and respond to alarms provide a large reliability factor and help prevent spills. These procedures ensure continued safe transport of sewage pumped to the treatment plant. This is the original plant headworks. The headworks is where sewage first enters the treatment process. A 24-hour composite sampler collects representative samples. Ultrasonic meters measure and totalize the flow. Trash and other items were ground up to reduce potential problems during the treatment process. The old headworks was replaced by a new state-of-the-art headworks facility in 2011. In the new facility, trash is screened out of the liquid stream and removed from the process completely. Eliminating trash and other debris, rather than grinding it up, improves the quality of the biosolids produced by the facility. When the biosolids are hauled away from the plant and applied to land or composted, they contain much less of these undesirable material. Aerated grit removal facilities now efficiently remove sand and grit that could otherwise accumulate in the digester system. Grit can displace volume in tanks, reducing treatment efficiency and causing costly projects to remove it. The new headworks is engineered so that the two main influent lines may be isolated from each other. This greatly reduces the potential impact of spilling sewage from a broken pipe. Better composite sampling and flow measurement is also designed into the new headworks. Covering flow channels and process units increases the efficiency of the air handling system and the biofilter. Odor control is always a challenge in the wastewater treatment process. Kitsap County is committed to reducing the impact of its facilities. The new biofilter is a premium process unit that is professionally designed to efficiently treat foul air from the headworks. This reduces odors and the impact that the wastewater treatment plant has on its neighbors. Air from the headworks is filtered through a bed of biological media, eliminating odors and the need for odor control chemicals. Primary clarifiers reduce the velocity of sewage and allow heavier solids to settle to the bottom of the tank. Settled solids are then removed by a pump. 
This process, the basic component of primary treatment, is cost effective and reduces the strength of the wastewater by at least 30% or more. Water overflowing these tanks contain dissolved solids that need further treatment using large quantities of bacteria and air in an aeration basin. We currently use constant speed 250 horsepower blowers to provide the air needed to remove dissolved solids in the secondary treatment process. These units create a large demand for electricity. New advancements in equipment increases the blower's system capacity and flexibility. These advancements allow the process to operate more efficiently by matching motor speed to differing airflow requirements. Wastewater flows from the primary clarifiers to the aeration basins for a secondary biological treatment. Wastewater is exposed to living organisms that consume the dissolved and organic matter remaining in the water after primary treatment. This is an aerobic biological treatment process, meaning that the organisms require dissolved oxygen in order to live, eat, and reproduce. Aerobic bacteria and other organisms thrive as they travel through the aeration basin. With sufficient food and oxygen, they multiply rapidly. By the time the waste reaches the end of the tank, usually four to eight hours, most of the organic matter in the water has been consumed by the organisms in the basin. What remains at the end of this process is called mixed liquor. The mixed liquor forms a lacy network that captures pollutants which then can be removed by settling in a secondary clarifier. Expanded aeration basin's capacity increases detention times and increases nitrogen removal. Removing nitrogen from the water is currently above and beyond our discharge permit standards and clearly demonstrates Kitsap County's proactive approach to preserving the environment. These are the secondary clarifiers. Organisms from the aeration basin settle to the bottom of the tank while the clear water flows over the top of the effluent weirs. The settled organisms are known as activated sludge. Activated sludge is quickly removed from the secondary clarifier and pumped back to the influent end of the aeration basin where they are mixed with the incoming wastewater. Here they begin the process again to feed on the organic materials in the water, decomposing them and creating new organisms. Left uncontrolled, the number of organisms would eventually be too high and some must be periodically removed. This is accomplished by continually pumping small amounts of activated sludge out of the system to our sludge handling facilities. The Central Kitsap Treatment Plant uses ultraviolet light to disinfect the final effluent. 120 variable intensity ultraviolet lamps are encased in quartz sleeves and submerged in water. Ultraviolet light kills bacteria and viruses in wastewater effluent by destroying their cellular genetic material which eliminates cell replication. The intensity of UV light and the number of lamps in service are controlled by a microprocessor using data from a flow meter and the laboratory to create an efficient dose of UV light. Once water passes this step, it's ready for discharge. Let's take a look now at what happens to the waste removed from the water. The solids that have been pumped from the liquid stream of the treatment process or delivered to the plant from private septic tanks and other treatment plants in the county are conditioned in one of two gravity thickeners. This is the first step to reduce volume and stabilize the solids for reuse as fertilizer or as a soil conditioner. Sludge is continually loaded into the thickener. Gravity settles the heavy, thick sludge to the bottom of the tank. The settled sludge is collected and pumped to a heated digester. Most of the remaining water that was pumped to the thickener overflows the tank and is piped back to the beginning of the plant to start over. The digesters use anaerobic bacteria to reduce wastewater solids from a sticky, smelly mixture to a relatively odor-free mix suitable for reuse. Solids are maintained to about 98 degrees Fahrenheit and remain in the digester for at least 15 days. Upgrades include equipment that provides improved thickening of solids. Thicker feed sludge to the digesters decrease the volume needed to be pumped into the digesters and increases detention time and capacity. This reduces the need to construct new tanks. Methane gas is produced as a byproduct during the digestion process and can be reused as a fuel gas. Methane gas produced during the digestion process is currently burned as waste. Upgrades include a cogeneration facility. This facility cleans methane gas so that its chemical energy is converted to mechanical energy needed to turn generators and produce electricity. Exhaust gas from this process is used to heat or cool buildings or digesters. These improvements are designed to reduce greenhouse gases and protect our environment. Solids processed through the plant's digester still contain large amounts of water. 
This increases overall weight and makes transportation and reuse difficult. Liquid sludge is further conditioned with a product that helps release water from the sludge before the centrifuge separates water from the solids. The water released from the solids is recycled to the headworks to begin treatment again. After going through the digestion and dewatering process, biosolids are more inert and easier to handle. They are now ready for beneficial reuse, including direct land application on crops or as a main ingredient in compost. During the average year, the Central Kitsap Treatment Plant dewaters over 18 million gallons of liquid sludge and recycles over 3,500 wet tons of biosolids for beneficial reuse. Most of these biosolids are composted with wood chips locally and used as topsoil or soil conditioners. Some of the biosolids are hauled to the Chehalis area and directly applied to land. Many homes in Kitsap County use on-site septic systems and are not directly connected to the sewer system. About four to five million gallons of septic waste is delivered to the treatment plant each year. Sludge is also trucked to the central Kitsap plant from the county's other treatment plants in Manchester, Kingston, and Suquamish. Providing further treatment at the central plant is cost effective by eliminating the need for duplicate equipment at each of the outlying plants. A new receiving station screens debris from septic waste and increases efficiency in the treatment process. The treatment plant's maintenance department is responsible for keeping a wide variety of equipment in good working order. This includes equipment at the county's four treatment plants and at nearly 60 pumping stations throughout the county. Our experienced mechanics and electricians provide reliable around-the-clock repairs to ensure effective and continuous operation of our facilities. An electronic preventive maintenance program provides scheduled tasks specified by equipment manufacturers to keep equipment operating effectively for the complete life cycle. If you would like to learn more, you're invited to come and tour the Central Kitsap Treatment Plant. Reservations for group or for individual tours are available with advance notice. Get more information by calling Kitsap 1 at 360-337-5777.